Raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. Hey, Fran. Um, I know we talked a lot about that sort of middle stretch in the second half. It, it, it's kind of seemed like it determines whether or not you guys pull out the victory. Um, what what went, I guess, awry or, or wrong in the second half for you guys? We had a couple opportunities to score, and we didn't. Yeah, would have been nice if we did in that situation because we got a couple stops. Friend, what made Coleman Hawkins difficult to, to defend? What makes him a tough assignment? He's a really good player. Uh, and he got off to a good start, which is obviously not what you want if you're defending him. But, you know, he's got a handle. He's got a uh, NBA three-point range. And he can go inside. Uh, you know, and Zobby's tough coming down the stretch. We had been heavy foul trouble. Makes, it even, makes him even that much harder to guard. Fran, I know um, you had challenged – Ben Cricky and he really stepped up in this last game, 14 rebounds tonight, um, just five. Uh, just physicality, what, what was the difficulty for him uh, today? I thought he was great. He had 15 points, shot seven for nine. I thought he was in there banging. Fran, major discrepancy between how you guys shot in the first half and second half. Um, I mean, I know the, the fouls might have played enough factor into the flow of the game. Just what did you see as the difference between the first and second half? Yeah, you know, I, I thought our shot selection in the first half was way better. Frank, you know, Elmo has really only played seven guys most of the year and then went much deeper on into his bench today. What did you maybe you know, see from maybe those guys that hadn't played you know, much of a role? Well, they're good players. You know, I'm, I'm sure you know, Brad's comfortable playing them at times. You know, Dania obviously been a starter, but uh, – you know, they're, they're good players, and they came in and they produced. you got to give them credit. Fran, um, Josh Dix really gave you a, a boost. Um, just what did you see from him today? He was great. Uh, he's been great. And the impressive thing about him is he he does play both ends. He fights you on defense, and he, he scores the ball. He makes really good decisions. I'm really impressed with him. Fran, I think just six minutes from Lodgy. Did you like what you saw from him? I should have played him more. You're right. He deserved to play more. That's on me. Fran, you, you guys still won two of your last three. Um, I just – what about this last stretch of three games? You know, how's you feeling good about what you can do the, the last – All I'm thinking three? about is one game, obviously, Penn State at home. They had a really good win today. Uh, they're playing at a very high level. I got a lot of guys playing well, and we got to be ready for that one. Fred, just what do you think of this league right now? It just seems like there's a little discrepancy between most of the teams here. Uh, I mean, the league is, you know, I said it's the best it's been top to bottom. Everybody's good. Uh, you know, you can't look at the next game and say, okay, we can get that one. You can't do that ever in this league. So you just got to try to put a game plan together, Keep try to keep you guys healthy if you can because, you know, the minutes are piling up. Right, thanks. thanks, guys.
Coleman just what's it take to flush that last one and bounce back both individually and as a team for you? Uh I, th I think it takes a lot of mental toughness. Uh I think uh the, the good thing was we didn't have time to take a day off and just think about it. You know, we flowed right into practice. Uh and uh we came out and had two great days of just going hard and competing hard. Uh kind of not even focusing on the Iowa scout, just being us and working on the things we need to work on. So uh, just cleaning up the things we need to work on was really important and then flushing it and uh, being mentally mentally tough enough to get past it and not not listen to what other people have to say about us. Nico, you did you expect to play this much today and, and what had you been seeing in practice to, that enabled you to get the confidence to come out and play well today? Uh... Well, probably didn't expect it that much, but um, I mean, I'm always trying to stay ready for every game and stay mentally focused and dialed in. So I think um, um, I've been working hard since my injury, and today was um, I think I proved all, all my work I've, I've been I've been putting in, and it's great, and um, it's great for the team too. Yes, Coleman and Justin both. What did? Maybe Nico and those four other guys give you when you know, coach went with like the full line change there early in the second half. I was it was uh, they just gave us a little bit more energy. Uh, that first group, you know, we um, <laughs> halftime is always a little slow. Uh, you get out there and you're just shooting layups. You're doing layup lines for about four minutes. Um, but, you know, we we didn't come out with a good start. But those guys went in. Uh, Nico was playing well. Uh, Nico played confident. Monty played really well. Strong, physical, grabbing rebounds. Dane played well. Um, he missed some bunnies, but I thought he did a good job getting to the rim. Um, uh, Luke came in. You know, I, I, I think they just did a good job coming in and and not, uh, you know, even if it wasn't expected, but just going out there and playing hard and, uh, you know, being a boost for us. Justin, what was the – Brad Underwood practice like on Thursday and how did you feel like you guys responded based on coming out today? Um, I just feel like it was um, a little bit more intense than uh, some of the practice that we had this year, but uh, it was definitely a Brad Underwood practice. We brought up the pads and played a lot of defense and was it was a lot of blood. <laughs> As Nico, when you check in with four of the guys your early in the second half, what did you want to do You know, at that point? I mean, what um, bring energy. I mean, I think um, we were a little bit flat, and I think Amani's a big energy guy. Dan can bring energy. Justin is big, you know, juiced up. Um, try to, you know, um, bring everything to the team. Trying to get rebounds, play hard, and that's what we try, we try to do. Yeah, for Coleman, you know, you mentioned supporting those guys when they're out there. As part of the group that got taken out, for, like, as you mentioned, you were playing a little, little slow to start. What's the mindset while you're sitting there watching that, you know, as you're thinking about what's going to happen when we do get back in the game? Um, you know, it, at first it's just frustrating because you, you wish you could, you know, you know, you see yourself coming out and you wish you could, like, flip it, like, right there and just get a second chance. But, you know, you got to come out the game and, and just support the guys that are on the court. Um you know, just be positive. Um, and that's what we did. And, you know, we knew we'd get back in there. We knew those guys would play hard, get tired, get back in there. Um, but, no, we just try to support them as much as we can. Um, and I thought they did a really good job of just going out there and playing hard. Um, you know, they they didn't think too much. You know, Nico went in there uh, when he stayed in that in, in that, that, that group with me, Marcus, Terrence, Justin, uh, and, and made some big shots. Um so, no, it was, it was just really good to see them go out and play hard. Coleman, for you personally, what was your process individually for flushing Wednesday and, and turning the page quickly? And I had to delete some apps, um, <clears throat> just get off social media, um, just try to limit who I talk to, um, not try, you know, not make any excuses for myself um and just be a man really uh just man up and and on to the next you know 
Um, and that's what I did tonight. You know, a lot of people would uh, – honestly, like a lot of people were saying, you know, whatever they had to say. You know, I'm curious to see how they would have responded if they were me. Um, but I, I thought I did a good job of just being tough and going out tonight and, and, and letting everything go. Coleman, kind of, kind of along those lines, you, you closed this game out, outscored them by 10 over the last – six minutes was was the way the previous game ended in the back of your mind at all or was it or were you just kind of in the moment yeah not at all no i was just in the moment just focus on playing hard for sure wasn't even thinking about it it's for coleman and justin what, what does nico add especially offensively to you guys when he gets the opportunity to have those minutes like that uh, i think he adds a different pace uh you know just pace coming off ball screens uh looking low opposite um though he's good at those skips um you know coming off ball screens he's good good at reading ball screens and, and an extra passer um and then just a little bit a uh, little bit of bite on 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 um on defense you know he's a smaller guard um but he's he's fast he's uh you know it's a little bit easier for him to get through those ball screens because he's a little bit smaller and you know we almost at times have four or five forwards on the court so uh, no, it's good to see Nico go out there and, and, and play the way he did tonight. You got some? I agree. <laughs> Justin, I'll ask you this one then. What what did it look like seeing Nico hit those two threes to, to get the lead back? And, and what's that say about him to step into that moment and help you guys close out the game? It was amazing. I, I always uh, – I like seeing my teammates win. It was just amazing seeing him um, hit them two big shots that – helped us bring the lead a little farther away and uh it just helped it just helped him bring his confidence up because when he get in the game again he's gonna do the same thing so it was good that he hit those two threes it's for you nico like you start to get in the rotation you get hurt like how did you kind of navigate all of that and, and like what kept you i guess i don't know grounded or, or ready to be able to make this impact like you did uh my teammates steph um always try to uh, stay around me and Keep, um, keep me focused like mentally. Started like, um, came in the gym more than everybody else with treatment, and then uh, with time with uh, with the ball coming back. And um, but it was hard mentally first of all, and um, and trying to get a get into practice, and uh, you're not able to 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 do what you what you used to be. And um, but um, I'm glad now that um, they be helping me and. Um, I'm glad they're around me. So, yeah. Coleman and Monty's giving you guys some good minutes and also guys had to come back from injury. What have you seen where he is now versus maybe earlier in the season? Yeah, I think uh, Amani adds some strength. You know, he's 6'6", like 240, 250. Um, you know, just not allowing post, uh, post touches, uh, not, not allowing bigs to get deep. You know, it's hard to score over him because he's so strong. Um, you know, he has, he has long arms uh, and he just plays hard. Um, you know, he's a freshman, um, but he, he goes out and plays as hard as he can. Um, he's, he's always trying to make the right, uh, you know, ball screen calls. He's always talking on defense. So he's just he's just been a good motor for us. Um, he's been positive for us. Uh, good teammate. Uh, and, uh, you know, he just adds a little different dimension because, you know, he's a little undersized, but still, he, he still gets the job done. So, Justin, what was the difference defensively, maybe between the halves? Because you know, Iowa shot sixty-two percent in the first half, thirty-five percent in the second. Um, I just feel like we was being way more physical and uh, way more urgency on the defensive end. Like I feel like they got a little bit middle. A lot. They got a they got middle a lot in the first half, and uh, that led to like easy buckets. But we just. We just listen to our bigs and honor the call, and we just play with way more urgency on the defensive side, and it led to easy buckets on the offensive side. So that was great to see. <clears throat> Coleman, this is five straight seasons of 20-plus wins, winning Big Ten seasons every year. You've been a part of four of those. What's that say about the program? What's it say about what you guys have done? Uh, no, it's it's big time because uh, – you know, obviously, when I committed, I was fully aware aware of where the uh, program was going. Um, so it's good to see that everything's still continuing. Uh, and now it's starting to become a tradition. Uh, you know, I I always before I you know when I first got to Illinois, my my biggest thing was like 
just making the, making the program stay to like a place where like someone gets excited if they get an offer from Illinois. Um, you know, you know, being a uh, being big for like recruits. Um, you know that that's that's something that that means a lot uh, when people are excited. You know, you know that, that Illinois offered them. Illinois is a basketball school, and um, you know they're super excited to want to be a part of something like this. And you know, I hope I hope that everybody realizes that you know we're right there with some of the best of the best, and we're capable of of doing this every season because um, we got great guys around us, uh, great staff, and uh, great fans, and everybody's great here. So, Nico, just with that, how would you describe the feeling of having that moment today? Um, needed because, um, after I went through this season and with the injury it was a little bit, um, um, as I said, hard, but, uh, um, I mean, I'm, I'm happy for the team first of all, and then second, second of all as myself. So, but, um, that'll be a boost of confidence and, um, I'm happy. Anything else for players? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. You know, sometimes um, I've said it many times that it's um, I like this team a lot and I use the word team um, in all caps. Uh, today was an unbelievable team victory and um, it was not easy. Iowa was playing great. They're uh, just one at Michigan State. Um, Fran, in my opinion, is as good an offensive coach as there is in the country. Uh, just developing guys, getting them to play at a high level. Um, I actually felt, other than the last play of the half, the last sequence of the half, I actually felt pretty good at half because I thought we'd force Dix and, and, and some of those guys into some pretty hard shots that they made. And uh, But... Uh, um, could not be prouder of Coleman. Um, growth, maturity, uh, great bounce back uh, from the other night. Uh, obviously, um, a night where Marcus and, and, and Terrence didn't have their best, and yet we found a way. I thought Dane, I thought Amani. Um, did, did, did great jobs. Um, Dane had a rebounds, um, you know, missed a couple bunnies, but, uh, uh, and then I thought Amani's, uh, presence was, uh, was very, very impactful. Um, Nico hadn't made a basket in a month. Uh, 
but you can tell he's a coach's kid. You can tell he's a team guy. He's never gotten wrapped up into any of that. He's never come and ask. He's never come and ask me what do I have to do to play. He just shows up every single day and does his job. Gets an extra lift with Fletch every day, um, and it's amazing how good things happen to people who work hard. And and uh, um, you know, and then I was, I was, I've been pretty upset with Justin um, after the game at uh, Penn State. Uh, you know, he gave up five back cuts and uh, um, just mistakes. They're just mistakes, and especially when you spend a ton of time on them. Um, and you can't go make mistakes. And, and I let him set a long time in the first half. And, you know, um, and, and yet he, he responded. Maybe, you know, that bench is a pretty good motivator sometimes. But uh, um, our bench won us the game. Uh, our defense, I thought, in the second half was outstanding. Uh, 35%, 16% from three. They made one. And... Um, uh, you know, we had enough and, uh, it's, that's, that's hard to do sometimes because you have to score against Iowa because, you know, they're going to make some, some, some tough shots. So, um, uh, great team win today. Brett defensively, obviously they, they only get 19 shots at the rim. Um, instead of, you know, some of the other games where you've seen 25, 30 shots, at the rim, more points, to point paint. It force was this what you envisioned when you Four tough twos here. Yeah, our whole, you know, it's no, it's not rocket science what we do. It's tough twos and and um, it, and then it's uh, limit them to one shot. I thought we did a much better job, especially in the second half. Nico gets a lot of credit just guarding the ball and and keeping it in front of us. And uh, um, you know, I think we we've we've somebody told me we gave up the fewest layups that we have since since the Rutgers game, maybe, uh, the first one. Uh, so, um, again, hat, my hat's off to, to, to Nico. Our guys guarded the ball better. Uh, and, and, again, we can't have mistakes. I've been – that's all I've been harping on. You can't make mistakes. You can't make scouting report mistakes. You can, you've got to be able to take away what the other team does. And uh, that's obviously a – benefactor of that brad similar situation to the penn state game uh back here uh up 10 with two minutes left did you sense a different attitude with the guys this time like they learned what not to do to you know avoid that collapse not at all i was the same way i you guys gotta understand we didn't talk for one second about the penn state game we didn't show one clip we didn't even grade it out and that's that's there's a difference between having freshmen and younger teams who who know, uh, Terrence Shannon knew he shouldn't have dribbled. He had three guys open. Um, Coleman knew he shouldn't have fouled. Um, you know, he missed two free throws. We took a quick shot. They all knew, and we talk about situations repeatedly. So, it was just it was more about the mental approach and and our ability to guard. So I didn't worry about I didn't worry about that for five seconds. We we did it the game before at Maryland. You know, we put it away. So that's just a a fluke, it happens, and um, we just flushed it, so to speak. Coach, was it was it the game plan to come in, come to this game to to use or to go that deep into the bench? And not really. And that's what I thought. And uh, not what, what was not, kind of behind the the line change there a couple minutes into the second half? I was just thrilled with the way the first group played. I was so excited about you know us not getting on the floor and and uh, giving up rebounds and and uh, I I. I I had seen enough with that group and, and um, um, their butt needed to find the bench and, and they needed to, they needed to understand um, it's not acceptable. And, and playing time is not, is not a given thing just because you average this or you've been out there. And um, I've said it, we've got a really good team and I, couldn't be prouder that it, it worked today, <laughs> but um, I've made a lot of line changes over the years in, in different in different ways. And but I also had a lot of confidence in 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 what what that group can do because I see them every day. Brad, I understand the motiv motivational aspect of the line change from that standpoint, but specifically to Nico, what did you see from him that also gave you the confidence to have him close the game out like he did? 
he's one, he's really fast. Um, you know, you know, my concerns with Nico are never on the offensive end. They've always been about defensively, but I, I kept him in because of what he was doing on the defensive side. We got over the top of every ball screen. He didn't foul. I mean, he he's he we all know he, you know, he might weigh a buck seventy soaking wet, and yet he's in there fighting and competing and uh, they tried to post him two or three times. He he committed a foul. I didn't think it was a foul, but um, but then you know he's got the ability to break the defense down. Uh, he gives us a different look. Uh, and again, in a night when TJ and 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 Mark weren't great, um, man, it created some 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 opportunities and and uh, to drive the ball and playing ball screens. And he was he was he was great, and he wasn't afraid to take a couple threes when he was wide open. Brad, you said this was growth and maturity for Coleman. Obviously, he's doing that throughout his career. But what did it look like the last couple of days? And what did he, what did he show you? What did he tell you? Didn't say much specifically. Got off social media, he said. Anybody want to check that? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, all those conversations stay really private. But we had a really, we had a real, a, a get real conversation, and and I I'm really happy with him. I love his response. A year or two ago, I'm not sure that that would have been the response. Uh, I think it was beneficial. We had a pretty quick turnaround in a game, um, but he practiced great, and it's just the correlation that happens with when the when the mind is right, and the mental approach is right. Uh, it was not at Penn State. Quite simply, not, and he knows that. But uh, uh, he also has to understand the impact that it has on everybody at this university, every fan, every teammate, and um, it's it's bigger than just him. And so he, I, I, I couldn't be happier. I thought Coleman was was just fantastic today. So Brad, uh, Coleman had a really good uh, effort play there that led to a steal, and I saw you gave him a high five. What are those type of plays just mean for the team? Well, as a veteran and as a leader, that that's really contagious. And we played this same Iowa team, and it took Demonte Williams diving on the floor for a loose ball to win a championship. And that's how you win. And and my my point of frustration is it's it's not it's not just a Big Ten game. It's 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 the abruptness of the end that happens if you don't make that play in the NCAA tournament. And we can't pick and choose when we do those moments. And he was picking and choosing. And, and, and the game the game will never treat you right if you do that. So growth, I, I hope it's it's continues to to be very contagious and diving on loose balls and 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 challenging the rim. And I thought Imani did the same thing. I thought we had multiple guys on the floor today. So um, those are all the hustle plays that let you advance in March. Brad, I know you've always been a big fan of Imani's game. What's led to where he can give you this kind of shot in the arm? Practice, I you know I I've said this many times. I think Amani would be playing twenty plus minutes a game if if it was not for his injury. Extremely high IQ. You know, I I don't know how to describe him. He's nasty. He's just got a nasty, competitive, gritty, fiery. He is the greatest trash talker we've had here since Io. Um, he fights you. He is, he is just that kid. That's who he is. And it's every day and it's every play. And, and we missed that when we, when he was out, but, um, you put that along the way that he's, he's a really, really smart player and, um, uh, he'd be helping us. I mean, even if maybe the plan wasn't to play the number of guys you did, the number of minutes that they got, I mean, does that make you, sort of reevaluate how you've used your bench, maybe in your rotation? I, you know, I, I don't go in with a plan. I go in to win. And and sometimes, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, we, 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 we've had a unique season in the fact that we haven't been really healthy and, and whole and, 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 you know, we've had some, some, some other issues. So uh, we had to do what we had to do to survive, to win. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to kind of be getting back there a little bit. Um, I was very, I'm so happy with Dane and, and Imani today, but again, it's just, uh, it gives me comfort to see them do it. 
Um, I'm not saying it was planned, but it, it's nice to know that, that that it worked out right. Rhett, five straight 20 win seasons. First time since Lou Henson. What's that mean to you? Well, I think it's really hard to do in this league. Um, I don't. I don't ever want to. I don't want anybody to t- ever take that for granted. Um, great coaches, great players, great administration. You look at what we've done with this building, the State Farm Center. You look at what we've done with UB, and um, uh, you know it, it's 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 um, speaks volumes to a lot of people, not just you know one individual, but we we've had really good players, and 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 I. I, I love consistency. I've, I've never been here to try to have a great team. I've been here to try to have a great program and, and, and to try to withstand that through, through the course of the time in what is the best league in the country and, and, and the best fans. So, but on the other hand, I think it kind of should kind of be the norm here. I think this is a really, really good job. And, and, and and you can win national championships here, and I've said that many times. And you know, throw the piano on my back. I'm I'm good. I can handle that. But that's the ex, that should be that's our expectation here. So, um, my opinion is, go get five more. Why stop? I I just I think it's it's within the realm. And but but uh, and I think today Derek told me was the the one thousandth win in Big Ten play our program and i think that there's only one other school is that right one other school to to accomplish that uh wow that speaks to everything i talk about how great this program is and and we have to look at it that way if we're not then then damn it leave i mean we have to think about how great this place is and this program is and and so i do so i i'm i'm yeah consistency part of it i'm i'm that means a lot that really does. It means a lot because we're in the best league in the country and there's a lot of really good coaches and players, but, um, you know, we should be kind of an arrogant attitude, but we should be. Brad Nico described his game today as needed. I guess, how did you see him navigate? Like he got into the rotation, then he gets hurt and he had to come back. Like, how do you see him kind of work his way through this whole season? As, as, um, well as anyone could do it. He never beat my door down. He showed up every day. He got the extra lifts. Um, and and what an unbelievable teammate and what an unbelievable statement for every basketball player out there. No matter what level you are. When you're when you're when your time comes and and you're needed, can you help your team win because you're prepared? I I'm sure he went in today not saying I'm playing 18 minutes. He had no idea. That's the ultimate teammate. It's the ultimate mental approach, staying ready. And and he has handled that as perfectly as any player I've been around. That was awesome today. That was fun to see. Hey, Brad. Uh, I saw yesterday you mentioned you were considering some slight tweaks on defense. It seemed today that you weren't switching as much, one through four. Is that Was that Iowa specific, or is that something that you might consider more of as you move forward? Um, we're trying to eliminate some mistakes. We're trying to be very conscious of matchups. Um, we, we were, it, it was both. It was to be very honest. Um, Perkins is a handful and, um, you know, the high ball screen, uh, switching their movement, their flares, um, are all, are all issues, but, uh, you know, it's something the more we're trying to just eliminate some mistakes and keep matchups a little more intact. With the way you guys played off the bench, does that or just give you more comfort as a coach if you need to make a, a big change like you did that you can do that and there won't be a drop off? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean anytime guys play well, I I I I think there's tremendous value in that. And and you know, like I mentioned earlier, it's it's we haven't had that luxury because we haven't truly been healthy and and we're we're trying to fight through um, just getting that back and seeing what that looks like right now. So I'm, like I said, sure, it gives me a lot of confidence knowing that Nico Moretti is going to be ready and that Amani's growing into what we thought he was going to be. Thank you.